one thing you're trying to do is say, of people. all these public companies out there, here's a company I really like. The fundamentals are terrific. Their earnings are doing well. Their competitors are doing poorly. I think this company's doing terrific. And all of a sudden, the stock might have gone from 40 to 30 because of this decline. That would say, wow, here's a chance to buy it. So you're trying to say some companies might have been overpriced at 60, and all they did was go to 50 and say, big deal. So you're trying to find companies you liked anyway. Right now, you liked them. And now they've had a haircut. That's what you would do. Not, not a stock that went from overpriced to fairly priced. Explain to me what's going on. Well, we had a huge run. I mean, the market was 4,000 just, you know, two and a half years ago. Yeah. And it ran up to 8,300 in August. And, you know, like any big rally, sometimes it backs off. I mean, it's healthy. It's it's a so everything is overpriced. Yeah, and that doesn't help anything. The market since World War II has sold between 10 times earnings and 20 times earnings. If you look at the Dow Jones or the S&P 500, if you add up all the companies and take the earnings, you say there's a relationship. And it follows. McDonald's earnings have been terrific the last 30 years, and the stock's been terrific. There's a direct relationship. So the earnings of the S&P 500 have been between this range of 10 and 20. We were just about to go over the 20, which is the high end of the PE range. There wasn't a lot of so room left on the PE So PE of 20 is, too, is, is at the it's top P. of how high it should ever be. Right. It's been over there only a few times ever over 20. And that's yeah. when usually inflation is about zero. The decline yesterday, in a sense, it let off some of this overvaluation. The market right. was even right. overvalued at where it was. Right. And by letting it off, right. then we got back to what was reasonable. Well, yeah, I would say fairly priced. Maybe for the larger companies, they're now OK. There might be some small companies. I mean, we've had 3,000 companies come public the last four years. That's two a business day. Yeah. Some of those companies have gone down dramatically. And, and that's sort of a research zone that average people in the stock shop, that's where you can find. Some people know a lot about this, 10,000 public companies. A lot of them are very attractive and no one's following them. And there's lots of people following IBM. Well, that's lots how you of got following, rich following companies that nobody else followed. Right. right. I, I'd like to go to see companies with unions or companies in trouble or companies that no one looks Hotels at. Hotels that had nice beds. And, well, yeah, and you have you to know, look at a lot of them. Or pantyhose your wife wore. I remember that's this right. story. Oh, okay, you've got Pier 1 Imports. My wife <laughs> found that one too. But, <laughs> but you have to look at 20 to find one. It's just you don't you know, go to the mall and find the stock. I mean, you have to say, my God, this sounds like it's good. And then you have to do some steps. You have to do an organized method. People are careful when they buy a toaster. Careful, they're careful when they buy a seat. They do. They do some research. But they don't do it with stock. They it's call up the market. broker or they see somebody at lunch and they say, man, I got this hot stock. Yeah. And you run right out and you spend $5,000, yeah, small investors. Yeah. Well, and, they, even more, they put an option in the international data whack. They don't even own international data yeah. whack. So they have a 90 day play. <laughs> but it's Bill like said it was good and they make a lot of money. Right, right. And it's, a, and it's like a casino. Yeah. So it's like a casino. You get the same results as if there's more paperwork. All right. So this morning you get up and you go in and you look at, at those companies that fit that that you know something about. You have to have an edge. I mean, you, let's say the cement industry goes from crummy to semi-crummy <laughs> to fairly good. Yeah. The stocks are going north. Right. You're going to make money. That's the industry you know. When if you know the publishing industry? You, you, some people, have, you have an edge. You work. I mean, when if you last 30 years, you worked in the restaurant industry? You would have seen Taco Bell. Right. You would have seen Sabaros. Right. You would have seen Pizza Hut. You would have seen Chili's. You would have seen these companies doing very well. You should have bought those instead of trying to buy biotechnology stocks exactly. you know nothing about. I mean, I know nothing about local area networking. A lot of people are buying this Cisco. They're buying the equipment, saying, we're going to root together all these peripherals and put together the servers. Well, they, but, but that's not a bad buy, because they own a huge percentage of their market. You know what? That was, they're saying only a few people have that money. My God, if it works for us, other people will try it. Then colleges will try it. High schools will try it. Then they'll go overseas. They knew they were early in the ball game, right. And they should have been buying that company instead of out buying something they don't know anything about, some oil drilling company. I mean, people have this tendency to always buy something they don't. All, all you right, need is a okay. few. Charlie, all you need is a few good stocks. Yeah, but this is your song. This has been no, your song no, for a long time. No, but Only buy what you know. No, but people wake up in the morning and say, there's 5,000 companies up there. Which one should I buy? The average person ought to be able to follow four or five companies. They ought to be able to lecture on them. They right. understand the companies. And this forces you. This tool says to you, write down the story. All right, but you keep saying this. this one thing you're trying to do is say, of all people. these public companies out there, here's a company I really like. The fundamentals are terrific. Their earnings are doing well. Their competitors are doing poorly. I think this company's doing terrific. And all of a sudden, the stock might have gone from 40 to 30 because of this decline. That would say, wow, here's a chance to buy it. So you're trying to say some companies might have been overpriced at 60, and all they did was go to 50 and say, big deal. So you're trying to find companies you liked anyway. Right now, you liked them. And now they've had a haircut. That's what you would do. Not, not a stock that went from overpriced to fairly priced. Something that was fairly priced at the start of this exercise and then had a very, you know, a five for four sale. You know. If you had been managing the Magellan Fund, would have been buying like crazy? I would have been researching like crazy. I would have been saying, which companies are the same story? Is there anything really happening? This is a non-event for them. They're still doing well. Even if we have a recession, there's nothing to do with them. And that's the kind of kinds I would try to buy. But let's say if a company, just think of it, this as being, you say to yourself, I think this company's going to earn something in the future. If it's already discounting that, if it's selling at a huge multiple, you say, it's already, it has to work. And then it's only going to stay even. So you have to say to yourself, if I'm right, how much am I going to make? If I'm wrong, how much am I going to lose? That's the risk-reward ratio. In stock shop, we talk about, if I'm right, 
I hope I'm going to double triple my money. If I'm wrong, they all lose 30%, 40%. That's a favorable ratio. If you say, if I'm right, the stock's not going to go up. It's already discounting terrific things. If discounting terrific things are already in the stock, I don't want to Okay, it. what you're saying to people today about the future of the market over the near term is what? What's your feeling? We can take I a got to buy business We can about take a coin out and flip it. I have no idea what the next 1,000 points is going to be. The next 6,000 points can be up. The next 14,000 points can be up. The next 20,000 points can be up. But you don't know what the next 1,000 is going to be. It Nobody could be does. down, could be up. Could Nobody be... does. And, and it's futile to try and guess it. Corporate profits will be a lot higher 10 years from now. They'll be a lot higher 20 years from now. That's what you could rely on. What about all the criticism of derivatives and the, and the impact they have had? That's a little complicated for me. I, all I know is, I mean, <laughs> I don't know about derivatives. for you. It's way over my head. I've never bought an option <laughs> in my life. I never bought I, Time's on your side when you own a stock. You know, I don't know about putting, you know, 3% down and buying a future and a strap and a straddle. That's way over my head. Can't, can't deal with that. <laughs> is that right? Let somebody else deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you're optimistic about the future of the American economy. Earnings potential for right. most well-run companies will do all right. But people have to understand we've had nine recessions since World War II. We'll have other recessions. But we're not in one now. But we may goodness. have one in the future, and don't get worried. About it. it will have one. Sometime it will happen, and no one will tell you when it's going to happen. It's just... well, but won't the fundamentals tell you? No, you'll find out after the fact. You'll, all of a sudden, you'll notice orders slowing, prices get more competitive, then earnings are down. I mean, usually you find out after that. No one declares. Everybody's insane we're going to have a recession for five years. It just hasn't happened. It's great to see you. Okay, I hope you'll Charlie. come back anytime, Peter.